<laughs> so for school, we have um, a project called the Community Project, and we have to do 15 hours of service, and so we decided we'd do that for the land, and we're focusing on prairie and kind of bird conservation, and we'll be making wayside exhibits, um, teaching about that topic, and so we're holding a raffle to raise money for the wayside exhibits, and if you, um, we have everybody signed up already, so the raffle poll will be at the end of the service. <laughs> That's not what you always want to hear at church. Well, I think you want to hear at church. I thought you were going to say words. Hi, oh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm going to play a song that. Uh, my, my disclaimer about this song is that there's a little almost like a tongue-in-cheek quality to it, except that I like it a lot, and when I sing it, I'm like, no, I like how that turns out in terms of theology. So, anyway, it's a bit of a story. I like it.
Well, welcome everyone. Thank you, Tony, for sharing your message through song with us. I love having you here. <laughs> um, and thanks, Ross, for stepping up with sound. And um, they can't hear me, but for um, Rebecca, for driving Nick out here for the um, young people for doing Prairie School. Oh my gosh, your kids are so adorable. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't. And this is an aside, but it fits into the topic nicely. Fiona used to have these. Hor oh, I shouldn't ruin. Fiona used to have these horrible tantrums, like you're talking about with one of yours. Oh my gosh, I used to think that the neighbors, because we were in an apartment, I used to think if they're going to call social services, then I'm going to get arrested. Like, I'm not even doing anything. <laughs> And it's always like the things that trigger them are like usually like um, you can't swim anymore because like the pool's closed or like something that's like. This morning it was because Orion got a new tie dye sweatshirt with a front pocket and Oceanus didn't. <laughs> and I should have been there. Because we're going after Maybe. Because they don't forget. Like no. you, <laughs> you tell them, like, oh, I'll get you one, and then it's like they d won't let it go, and you're like, okay, well, I guess we really are going to go to Old Navy. <laughs> they break you down. Sure do. <laughs> uh, this is Labor Day weekend, and so um, one of the things that I've been reflecting on, oh, sorry, is that, okay, is that sound okay for you guys? Because I know there's lots of us here today um, with Labor Day weekend, but um a lot of our friends are traveling, um, recovering from surgery, doing all sorts of stuff. But uh, this week's theme and maybe even next week's theme is um, going to be about rest. And um, the scripture that we're going to be looking at comes from Matthew. Um, but as part of my, um, I realized that, you know, I took the month of January technically off, but I was still doing all the worship services on Saturdays because we were in COVID, and um, as horrible as I was at video editing, I was still the only one that knew how to do it, besides probably our kids, our teenagers. I'm sure they could have done it. <laughs> um, but then I, I've been putting off and putting off kind of, how do I want to take time off? And last weekend, I just decided that I was going to go back east that's where I grew up, and I'm going to cry about this, but I think it was after I booked the tickets, I realized that I hadn't been back to see any of my family for 15 years. And so my dad's called me about nine times since I booked the tickets, and Uncle Albert wants you to stay for two nights. <laughs> Uncle Tom's going to take you to this summer cottage, and <laughs> just like this whole um, sort of, you know, overwhelming, obsessive, slightly <laughs> outreach of people being so excited that Fiona and I are coming and just realizing that that feeling of being loved and wanting to be taken care of these are people who you know know me as stuffy who have never who would probably never see me as a pastor which there's something very liberating about that freedom um and so this idea of going back um and the scripture that I'm going to read today um really connected me to I think the invitation of rest. And so I'm just going to read this um, scripture to you from Matthew. Are you tired? This is Jesus talking to his friends. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. These words in the context of just having gone through this past week of feeling like all of a sudden I have this fan club <laughs> who can't wait to see me and welcome me home um, really just shifted the way in which I see rest and also the way in which I see my relationship with the divine of this idea of feeling wanted and loved of people not wanting anything in return from you. Just to know you, just to be in your presence, just to share life with you. And 
this idea of coming to someone for rest. Right, because if I were going to title this um, sermon anything or this reflection, it would be it's it's not you, it's capitalism. <laughs> because I think like rest is so difficult to think in this capitalistic view because it's all about production and achieving a goal and being sustainable on your own, like standing on your own two feet. And what if? Rest isn't something that we're capable of giving to ourselves, but that we have to come to a community for, or that we have to come to a person for. This idea kind of switches the whole um, vision of me for me of what a faith community could be. And I don't think that that vision is completely new, but I think it gives me the language and the validation for something that I've sought. Because churches are great places um, to reflect the same values and the same patterns as everywhere else in the world. Like, we need more volunteers. We need to build more things. We need to raise more money. And the more is just infinite. There is never a point at which we would build enough here that everybody would be like, oh, okay, that's great. We're done. Because the idea is to convince people of our worth, to tell our story, to get their money. We need to prove that we're progressing, that we're building things, that we're impacting people's lives. And none of that is bad, but it is really exhausting. And no one is ever on the same page in a community, which I think is a very good thing. But we all have different ideas of what impact we should be making, of what things we should be building. And the diversity is essential for a healthy community. But if you're pushing, 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 the conversations and the healthy conflict even wears us down. Do you want to come to the table at Thanksgiving when you know you're all going to disagree about politics and that you're going to have to defend yourself and explain yourself and fight for yourself to be seen? Or do you want to come to the Thanksgiving table where you all just love the taste of the turkey and you can laugh and you can play games and you can not worry about all of the pressures of validating your existence? To me, this is what Jesus is saying when he invites his friends to come to me because I love you. And the idea or the goal that we could be a community of rest is so intriguing to me, but it requires such a release on all of the things that we've been taught um, define a successful church. All of the pressures that we put on each other to preach or not preach, to say this or not say this, to use this song or not use this song, but what if everything that we were bringing to this community was just an expression of rest for us? What if it was restful to come and articulate your true self? What, it was, what if it was restful to come and sing a song that reflects your true theology and your place in the world? The work that we do can be rest if it's an invitation into a community to be seen, to be heard, to be loved, to belong. I think that there are fundraising issues and finances that do function for us just as they do every other organization as triggers to those of us who are really seeking a safe place to rest into. But we do have a choice as to how we respond to those triggers. Do we have enough spiritual self-awareness to know that Jesus really was modeling a sacrificial life, not of giving until it hurt, but of letting go of everything until people could see the sacred nature in all people, in every community? Are we willing to let go of pushing, pushing, pushing toward a goal that really we will never feel as though we've achieved enough? Are we willing to rest into each other to see the gift that we each bring and to know in that gift and in every moment we will always have enough? So I want to play a familiar song probably to see you older folks. Um, 
And I think what I want to say about this is that before I'm <laughs> stuff, I'm, a, I'm among you. <laughs> I, I am familiar with this song from my own life. Um, yeah, but I, I think what I want to say about that, though, uh, mm. in terms of a rest, a community of rest, I like that, is that this song, um, it describes some uncomfortable feelings, but it doesn't try to go anywhere with them. It just uses the music to be okay hanging out with discomfort. And I really like that a lot. But um, And that sounds terrible, except that you'll know the song. <laughs> talk about um, the concept of rest again, um, talk about physically you need rest, so take a bubble bath, take a nap, um, go to a spa, um, do all those really great things that you can do to help your physical body rest. Um, but then there's also spiritually things that you can do as well. So things like prayer, um, journaling, um, reading the Bible, stuff like that are just things that you can do to just rest your soul. And so today on our wander, uh, I like to think of it as like a time of rest. Um, because sometimes when you're so tired, you can't do anything but just be with God. So we can just take this time, just be with God, and enjoy our wander. Um, so we'll take like 10 minutes. Yeah. So 
take like 10 minutes, um, go on our wander. And yeah, Tony will bring us back. Thank you. I wish you After all, the jacks are in their boxes. And the clowns have all gone to bed. You can hear happiness staggering on down the street. Footprints dressed in red. Room is drearily sweeping. Up the broken pieces of yesterday's life. discussion that we had started on Wednesday, um, just kind of around the idea of what labor looks like in our self-care. Personally, I know <laughs> that my self-care does a lot better when I have someone else there with me. And right now, Jamie's in Louisiana. So <laughs> thinking about your self-care, your tactics, the questions that we're going to be thinking about are... What areas of your life would you say you are laboring or weary right now? What's holding you back? What kind of yokes do we carry? And what are some burdens that are currently on your soul? I invite you for the next 10 minutes to, as you feel willing, to find the groups, three, four, five people, and kind of share your burden, share your laboring with someone else. We're going to pull for the raffle. We're going to pull. Here, can you hold it? Yes. We're going to pull for first place. Yay. Okay. And that's my dad. So. Ah! <laughs> well, he has to give his away, too, because he doesn't have, have it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If the next one's your mom, you're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Gary! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Shaking it. And Bev. Oh. Oh. Yay. 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 
I pull another one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, instead of my dad. <laughs> Dana! Yay! <laughs> okay, so we got Jerry for first place, Bev for second, and Dana for third. Yay! Can you all follow up with him? Yeah. Yeah, I will follow up with you about getting the prize. Yay! Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Um, before you go, I have just a few um, announcements. One. Saturday, October 2nd, we're going to have our first on-site fundraising event, and this is all a reflection of Dana and Allison and Libby's amazing vision and creativity and, and work, um, and we're going to have a bluegrass band from um, Lamont School of Music, um, so I'm excited about that, and then we're going to have a cater nosh, and the um, idea of the event is a night at the land. And so um, it's, we're going to be just really showcasing all of the things that happen at the land at once to um, spiritually connect people to the mission of the land. I, I'm writing a grant proposal right now, and I said, when you start something, a lot of times people invest in the inventors, and we're moving into a place where we want to connect people with the invention and to show how spiritual transformation is possible with um, innovative mis ministry. So I'm really excited about that. So save the date for October 2nd, 4.30 to 6.30. And invitations go out probably late next week. And that's really the only announcement that I have. Um, but let's just go ahead and um, close with a moment of prayer. Now just take, um, invite us to take maybe a deep breath because we're going back out into the world that um, reminds us of everything that we came here to forget. <laughs> Holy Spirit, loving God, creator of all things. There is so much mystery that surrounds us. And we have mystery even within ourselves, waiting to be discovered. May we find this week moments to slow down and offer ourselves compassion, to keep our eyes open to the world, but to remember that in all things we see, we are not alone. Go in peace, to work for peace. Amen.